Hi, it's time for something that's very important going into this format, and that is things that you need to know how to play around and interact with with Branded. There are a lot of powerful staples and boss monsters in the game, of course, and you're going to need to be able to play through them or around them. So I've compiled a bunch of cards and game states that are going to be pretty relevant in this format, so let's just jump into it. Okay, so let's start with Kash Tira Arise Heart. Now, we all know at this point the basic little line you can have to Arise Heart, which is Branded Fusion into Rinbrom, Arise Heart's first uh, effect to attach a card to it activates mandatorily, which then allows you to chain Rinbrom to negate and then bounce any card on their field. Now, this does seem like a pretty good play. However, there are some issues that you need to bear in mind, and especially because you do give up your search with Mercuria when you do this line, because then you can't chain chain orders, you have to put Mercuria on chain first, so you wouldn't be able to respond to Arise Heart. But there are situations where you need to be watching the game state. So, for example, you go here into a board with a Shangri-La and an Arise Heart with three materials, one of which is Big Bang. So, we activate the Brand Diffusion, our opponent is going to chain Arise Heart detaching the three materials and banishing our branded fusion face down. Now, this doesn't seem like it does that much. It triggers the Shangri-La, but we have the extra monster zone, so we don't need to worry about our zones, right? That isn't what they're doing here. So say we banish our materials and we summon out our Lint Rinbrum here. And we think, okay, now they have to mandatorily activate the Arise Heart. So we can just train Rinbrum, right? No. Because there's other trigger effects to go on chain here, they, because they banish our Brandy Fusion base down, get to activate the Shangri Era effect, trigger effect to lock on other zones. Which, you know, that's fine, we can still change Rimbrum to that. But they also detached this big bang, and because they control Shangri Era with a Fenrir as material, they can go chain link 3, the effect of big bang, targeting their Shangri Era to summon the Fenrir or add it to their hand. We can no longer chain Rimbrum because this trigger effect has to go on chain before we can use Rimbrum. So the reason that this is relevant to remember and look at the cards they're sending, like for example if this is like in the grind game and your opponent has birth up and you have cards in the graveyard, they could activate birth because you've activated a spell effect with brand infusion. You need to look this out because if they get to this point of activating the Shanga Era and Big Bang because you were waiting to use Rimbrum, you can't activate your Mercuria anymore because it has to go on chain first because it's your trigger effect on your turn. So if you see your opponent detach something like Big Bang off of a right heart to banish your Brand Fusion, or if you activate Brand Fusion or you have three cards in Graveyard and your opponent controls birth, you need to, on the new chain, when they go chain link on Rise Heart, you need to go chain link to Mercuria because they are going to activate a trigger effect of a spell or trap and then you cannot Rinbrum to bounce their monsters. So you cannot get Horde to give up on that additional search with the Mercuria. Okay, so if you can't really out the Arise Heart with Rinbrum, what can you do? There is another way that does get over it without triggering anything like Fenrir or any other zone lockers, and that is we're going to be activating Branded Fusion. What a big surprise. And we're going to be sending any big monster, probably Lubellion here, because it's the worst thing for our opponent to attach with an Arise Heart. They don't really want to put that in a grave. So we're going to summon Titanic Lad, which is going to gain 1200 attack because of the combined levels of the materials, and for the rest of the turn, it is unaffected by extra deck monsters effects. And now you can just go straight into a Vice Heart with a 3700 attacker. And the only real way to stop this is by flipping an Imperm to reduce its attack. That's the, they have to hard open that. So that's something you could do pretty easily to get over it. And it doesn't trigger any of the other effects. Alright, next up we have a card that's going to be pretty relevant in matches against decks like Labyrinth is Ice Dragon's Prison. Now there's a really important interaction with Ice Dragon's Prison you need to bear in mind and I've seen so many players not realize this. And that is that against you there are a lot of situations where Ice Dragon's Prison will be hitting an illegal target. So, for example, in this game state, we have a dragon on field that they want to banish with Ice Dragon's Prison, or we have a dragon on field and they want to banish a dragon that's useful in our graveyard, right? We've used Mirror Jade to send Albion to the graveyard. Our opponent is going to activate Ice Dragon's Prison, and we have in our graveyard here a Lubellion and an Albion, both dragons, 
that they would like to banish from the grave because they're both really good for advantage generation and we have a baldric on the field they could banish right so say they attempt to target a lubellion the issue here is neither of these monsters can be summoned by ice dragon's prison the Albion was sent by our Mirror Jade effect, which means it was not properly summoned, and you cannot summon fusion and other extra egg monsters from the graveyard that were not summoned properly first. This cannot be targeted by the Ice Dragon's Prison. And Lubellion cannot be targeted by Ice Dragon's Prison ever. It must be special summoned by its own condition. It cannot be summoned in any other way, so your opponent cannot target it with Ice Dragon's Prison. But I have seen a lot of people mess this up and let their opponent banish a Lubellion from their graveyard and a monster from their field. You've got to make sure you note they cannot do that, and you've got to track which fusion monsters in your graveyard were and weren't properly summoned, because some of them are legal targets for Ice Dragon and other few revival effects, and some of them aren't. So here I'm going to show you how to play around Nibiru, and you can do this in five summons exactly, so you can make sure that you cannot be nibbed with this specific line. So all it's going to really require is Valiant and Brand Fusion in this example. There's other ways to reach this, but this is the simplest possible way to get to it that I'll show you. So we're going to use the Bellion effect to search. As usual, we're going to add our Serenade. This is a normal line anyway. And, but it's going to differentiate very slightly just to make sure we play around Nip. So we're going to go Brand Infusion into our Rinbrum, use our Saranir to get up on field and search our Cartesia. Because we have the Lubellion, we'll summon our Lubellion. You can Saranir sending whatever here, we'll just send Retribution. And then you're going to go Lubellion to grab Branded Loss. This isn't that odd of a play, you can do this pretty often anyway to search a few things. Like getting Mercury is pretty good. But this way specifically plays around Nibiru. So then we're going to summon our Cartesia. This is our fourth summon of the turn. So then we're going to go Cartesia Effect. You may have other materials in hand or feel at this point. You have three other cards in hand, so you don't necessarily have to use the Rebellion here. But we don't have Beast up necessarily, so we're just going to use him. We're going to go into Grand Gwinol. Now, our opponent has a Nibiru in their hand. We have just performed our fifth summon, but because of Branded Lost on the Chainlink 1 Cartesia, they cannot activate the Nibiru. So now you get to go Gwinol Effect, sending whatever, and Chainlink 2 Branded Lost, adding your second copy of Mercuria, and if at any point in the turn now they choose to Nibiru you, you can just negate it. Now here's a pretty important one as well, because there's some new power cards in the format, and an old power card in the format, that are very very good right now and that is triple tactics talent and triple tactics thrust now if your opponent is going first for example obviously this isn't a board state that's really going to happen but say you're going second into an deck and you have some bestials in hand and there isn't really a choke point where you can use them to interact with your opponent but they do end up putting some lights or darks in grave and you'd like to just put them out on board like a magnum to get that free search right just make sure that if you're doing that, you are not summoning that Magnemut before their end phase. Because, yes, you still get your search, but then they get to go hugely plus with talent and thrust. They can rip in your hand, they can draw, they can add anything they want. Absolutely got to be careful that when you're doing this, you are specifically waiting until their end phase to get your Magnemut out, get the search, and they cannot use their talents or thrust because you just didn't use any monster effects that time. So here there's something important to go over, and that is that you need to know when and when not to fire off your interaction. Here we're going to talk about a card like Book of Eclipse. So we end on a pretty normal board state. We're going to pass over, and our opponent is going to activate Book of Eclipse. Do not fire anything off here. Yes, you are going to lose some interaction here. You're going to lose your Bestial face-up so you can't use Beast. You don't have your Rinrum face-up anymore, and you don't have your Gwinol face-up anymore. It's not the end of the world. We still have plenty of interaction. We still can flip up Brandon in red. We still can make a Mirror Jade using our Gwinol. If any of these get beat over like Rinrum, we can still use its effect in Grave. We get a search off of the Branded Loss from the red to get into our Mercuria. After this clip, still end on two interactions. And if they get through any of these face downs, you get to bring back your Rinbrom, you get to use your Gwinol effect in the graveyard, if you didn't use it as fusion material. This of course depends a bit more on the game state, but yes, do not panic when you see cards like Book of Eclipse because you still have loads of interaction. 
So if you want to play through some stuff like Eclipse or various other interaction and set up a Chimera board, you can send your ad libitum using Granguinol and then do, you know, the old school play, Brandon and Red, add back your Ad Libitum on your opponent's turn when they have some monsters up. You can make a Chimera using Rinbrum, Granol, and Ad Libitum, or do Bellion in Rinbrum and Ad Libitum, bring back the Rinbrum. You could make a Mirror Jade if you want by bringing back Albaz and leaving Ad Lib where it is. You have a variety of options you can go for here. You do not need to panic, you have a lot of interaction here. Like, say you do go ad lib into Chimera here, you bring back your Rinbrum, you can then lost add Mercuria, you've now got Chimera plus Rinbrum plus your negate from Mercuria, that's three different interaction, and if your Gwynol gets outed, you have that live in the graveyard. And your Limbrum's grave effect is still live to bring itself back or summon an Albaz during your opponent's turn. So, outright, the most powerful interaction with us in this format is evenly matched. This card is a house, it is so difficult to deal with, and yeah, I'm starting to side Solemn Judgment because it's the only real way to guarantee you don't get fucked over by it. But there are some things you can do, potentially, and there is a line we're playing that you can go through as I'm demonstrating in the background here that does make your opponent unable to use cards like Evenly Mash and Lightning Storm against you. You're not going to be main decking this, you're going to be side decking it, and it does make your end board generally a bit weaker. But you end on a very, very powerful Floodgate that also stops your opponent from evilying you, so I think it's pretty good to go into. And if you open enough access to Bistials, you can make this line completely immune to Bistials by... And here we're going to be using our Granguinol to send a copy of Gimmick Puppet Nightmare to the graveyard. Now, we played a fair few variety of interesting Floodgate monsters in Branded. There was Edo, the Supreme Magical Force, Ra's Disciple, Artifact Scythe. Those were all things you would summon off of Branded Expulsion. And this is no different. But the reason we're playing Gimmick Puppet Nightmare now is because this effect does not activate and is not continuous. It applies for the entire turn after being summoned to your opponent's field, which means if they open a Book of Eclipse or something to tribute set over it, it doesn't matter. They're still locked out of special summoning for the entire turn. And because you've summoned this to their field, they're locked out of using something like Evenly Mesh. Because it's at level 6 or higher, light or dark, and send it off of Grinol without using your Branded Fusion on it, so you still get the advantage generation from the Branded Fusion you normally get. And by getting access to Lost from Lubellion, we can send both Saranir, our Retribution, and our Expulsion with Albion, add back our Expulsion to hand, set it, and then when it comes around to our opponent's turn, and particularly if we had a Bistial, you can banish the Nightmare preemptively from your graveyard so that your opponent has a Bistial in their hand on their turn. It doesn't matter, they can't stop this from resolving because you have two targets banished and there's nothing they can do really to stop them from going back onto the field. You pull up your Expulsion, summon back Mercury to your field and your Gimmick Puppet to your opponent's field. They now cannot special summon except Gimmick Puppets for the rest of the turn. You got in a gate with your Mercuria. And yes, your board is weaker than it would be, but they're under a floodgate, and they can't activate their evenly match, can't activate their lightning storm. It's pretty much the only way you can outright play around this card. The other option is just Solemn Judgment. So here I want to demonstrate some of the ways fusion deployment is really, really powerful and really cool of an extender to play through some interaction. So here we've ended on through our Rinbrum line, a board. We have our Rinbrum, our Saranir up, and our Cartesia, and we want to fuse away. We didn't open our Lubellion, so we don't have access to it, Well, we would have put it up here. But anyway, we want to fuse away, right? But our opponent, when we activate our Cartesia, is going to imperm our Cartesia. Now, if you don't have access to a card like Deployment, you might just end your turn here. But because we're on Deployment, we can go activate it and reveal any Albaz Dragon from our extra deck. Summon Albaz from your deck, and then you can contact Fuse using your Albaz and your Saranir or any other Bistial and summon Albalenitus. It just requires one Albaz plus a Dragon Monster. And also, this can't be used as fusion material, so if you end on this, your opponent can't super poly it. Doesn't need that much, but it can come up. And you gotta bear in mind you can't use this for your own fusion material with Cartesia. But it doesn't really matter because what we're gonna be doing is then triggering our Saranir 
sending a Lebelion, and because this is a Dark Dragon, we contribute it to bring back a Lebelion. So we just played through the Imperm, we didn't get to resolve our Cartesia line, but we did get to get through a whole Lebelion line by using Fusion Deployment. So do bear in mind, this is not just a Cartesia searcher. Getting Albaz can be really, really good, and this is why I'm on Lenitus. We even get to then search with Lenitus in the end phase for a Fusion Deployment or a Branded Fusion. And if you're playing some other stuff potentially, this can't search super polymerization. Bear that in mind, it only searches normal spells. Do not let your opponent search super poly with this card. And here's another one of those that you don't really care that much about, and it is Dark Ruler. I think Dark Ruler is one of the weakest interactions you can play this format, so you probably won't see it that much, but just in case it does come up, you don't care when this card is activated. Yes, it has negated your Rinbrum. What a disaster. Lubellion has no on-field effects. Gwinolt on-field effect can be used in the graveyard. You still have access to pretty much everything. And they can't kill you because of Dark Ruler. So they're going to end up clearing some of your monsters by battle and such. And you get to use your Gwinolt effect in the grave. You get to bring back Rinbrum or Alvaz. You get to flip up your red to make a variety of things like Mirror Jade. Using the Gwinolt if you're like, oh, it's negated. What am I going to do? You get your Lost Search. You get Beast still alive by tributing Lubellion, because it's an effective beast, not Lubellion. Like, Dark Ruler is obviously bad into Kashtira, because it doesn't stop the zone locking of Shangri era, and it's not good into us either. I don't expect people to be on it, but in case you do see it, yeah, you just don't care. Okay, lastly, I do see people talking about Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, which some cash players are playing, and a couple other decks to just put on your field on turn one, because one, it locks cash players out of playing, but it also locks us out of playing and branded. Honestly, I'm not too concerned about this card. I don't think it's going to actually be that good, but just in case you do run up against it, we do have a lot of outs to it. Now, if they're setting up a full cash board, you're not going to be able to activate something like the Bellion, but if you're main decking a lot of Bistials, like you should be, you can just tribute Set of Ribley, and then you have four of the cards in hand. When I'm main decking Book of Eclipse's format, I think you should be as well, that outer. Um, if you open a Bistial, you can just banish her before she gets summoned, so... Most of the time, I think you're going to just, with six cards, have an out to her anyway. Uh, honestly, I know it seems kind of scary, the idea of, like, oh, some hands, I just can't out this, they'll just summon it to my field and I'll lose. But, like, they know you're on Bistials. They know you're on Book of Eclipse. They are not going to be maining Ibli. They're going to be siding it. And they're not going to be looking at Branded, a deck that may be playing up to six Bistials in main, eight Bistials in main, siding them, I'm siding two, maining six. They know you could have... It. Eight Bistials in your main deck in game two, they're not going to be siding in Ibli. They're just not going to be doing that most of the time if they're a good player. And even in the rare situations where they do, you're just you're very, very, very likely to have access to a Bistial in six cards. So I'm just really not that worried about it personally. So that's everything I've got. Uh, I didn't cover absolutely everything, but I think I covered a very good wide margin of stuff that has pretty reasonable ways to out. There's obviously a lot to go into, and we can't cover every single staple in the format, but I think we got a very good berth here. Maybe I'll have to do more and cover more, but if you want to see more active playing through of boards and stuff, I will be streaming some branded gameplay over the few coming weeks on Dueling Book as I get my practice in for YCS London, so that's something you could do as well. That's all I got for you. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.